Welcome to the complete playlist of data structures using Java. Here we discuss each topic in details along with five problems on it. If you haven't checked our playlist, do check the playlist to master the data structures using Java. If you are new to our channel, do subscribe the channel for more such educational videos. So welcome to the another video of data structures using Java. In this video, we will be solving our second problem on string and that is remove the outermost parenthesis. So let's understand what exactly the question means. So in the question, they will be giving us a valid parenthesis string. Now the big question comes in, what do you mean by valid parenthesis string? So valid parenthesis means that for every opening bracket, there is always one closing bracket. For example, if I write the string as this way, I can say that this string is a valid parenthesis. The reason behind this is for this opening bracket, I have the closing bracket. For this opening, I have this closing bracket. And for this opening, I have the closing bracket. Therefore, can I say that this is a valid parenthesis string? But if I write a string as this one, I cannot say that this is not a valid parenthesis. Because if you observe carefully that for this opening bracket, I have the closing bracket. For this opening, I have the closing bracket. But if you observe carefully that for this opening bracket, I don't have any closing bracket. Therefore, this is not a valid parenthesis. So I hope so that you understood what is the meaning of valid parenthesis. So what they have given us, they have given us a valid parenthesis string. And that string can be in between A plus B or if I observe carefully P1 plus P2 plus P3, whatever it may be. And what we need to do is we need to decompose it. So what do you mean by decomposition? If you observe carefully that the given string is, there I have the P1, P2, P3, P4, whatever it may be inside those two closing parentheses. And what I need to remove is, I have to remove this outermost parentheses. So overall, after decomposition, my string should look like this P1 plus P2, P3 plus P4, and should have P5, right? If you try to observe this carefully by given example, let's suppose if I have this as now what I can say that this is nothing but P1, this is nothing but my P2, and this is nothing but my let's suppose P3. And I need to remove this outermost parenthesis. And after removing the outermost parenthesis, my string would look like this one. Right? Because what I did is I simply removed these two and I simply removed these two. So my overall string will look like after removing the outermost parenthesis. So this is what I need to do in this question. So I hope so that you understood the meaning of the question. Now let's jump on how we can try to approach this problem. Now let's try to think how we can approach this problem. So there are two things that we need to consider over here is that, that whenever we come across the opening bracket, I'm going to increase my counter by one. And whenever I come across the closing bracket, I will decrease my counter by one. Now, initially my counter is equal to zero. Now, whenever I say that the counter is equal to zero, there might be a two possibilities. The first possibility says that I haven't started with my string, right? See, if you observe carefully that I haven't started traversing my original string, so my counter is zero. And the second comes in the total number of opening parentheses is equal to total number of closing parentheses. For example, if you observe carefully that the total number of opening parentheses is two and total number of closing parentheses is also two, which means both cancels each other and initially my counter again will become zero, right? So in order to become a counter zero, there are two possibilities. Number one, I haven't started my original string. Number two, my total number of opening parentheses is equal to total number of closing parentheses, right? So I hope so what we are going to do with these two things. So initially my pointer is pointing into the first character of my string that is opening bracket. Now, if you can see that as we am standing at the opening parenthesis, I can simply increase my counter by one. Therefore, I'll simply increase the counter by one. Now I will move ahead and I can say that again, I'm coming to the opening parenthesis. Therefore, I need to increase my counter by one, which becomes two. Now, if you observe carefully that the counter is two now, which is not equals to zero. Therefore, can I say that I can include this bracket in my answer? Yes. Now the big question comes in from when you were standing at this position, my counter was one, which is also not equal to zero, right? Then why you don't include this bracket into my answer? We will discuss this something later, right? Then what I'll do is I'll simply move my pointer to the next position. and I can see that I came across the closing parenthesis. Therefore, I need to decrease my pointer by one. And again, observe that my pointer at the counter is non-zero, right? One is not equal to zero, which means I can simply take this bracket into my answer. So I included this. Now what I did is I simply took my pointer one position ahead. Now again, I came across the opening parenthesis, therefore simply increase counter by one. And as you can see that my counter is non-zero, therefore I can include this into my answer. Therefore, I simply inserted this bracket into my answer as well. And I shifted my pointer by one position ahead. Now I am standing at the closing parenthesis and I need to decrease the counter by one. So my counter becomes from two to one. Again, the counter is non-zero, therefore I can simply include it into my answer. I shift it to my next position where I came across as a closing bracket. Therefore, I need to decrease it. So it will become zero. Now, since my counter has become zero, I will not include this, right? I will not include this. Now, we discussed earlier that whenever I was present here, my counter from zero did become one, which is one is not equals to zero, right? One is not equal to zero. Therefore, I haven't took this, but I haven't took this. The reason why I haven't took this is whenever I completely traverse one composition, the counter will become zero. Therefore, if I included this, my string will look like this one, right? Now, there is no any closing bracket for this one. Right? This is not valid. That is the reason why whenever my counter is one, I will not include it. I will only include it if my counter is two or more than two. 
So I'm done with my first composition. So I'll shift my pointer to the next position. So I come over here. Now what I can see is my I came across the opening parenthesis. Therefore, I need to increase my counter by one. So might become as one now. Now since my counter is non-zero, should I take it? Should I take it? No. You should don't be taking this pointer, right? Because when you traverse this, my counter will become zero, and at the end you will not be taking this. But you are taking considering my answer. Therefore, there will be no any closing bracket for this consider this. Therefore, I will not be taking this, and I'll shift this pointer one position ahead. Right? Now you can see that again I come across opening parenthesis therefore I need to increase the counter by 1 so it become as 2 and now 2 is not equal to 0 then I can simply take this into my answer. Now move to the next position that is the closing bracket and now you can see that as I came to the closing bracket my counter will decrease by 1 so it become 1 and since it is not equal to 0 I am going to consider this and now I came across my final character and since it is a closing bracket it will go to the 0 and since 0 is equal to 0 I will not consider this and finally I got the exact string which I was looking for. Right? So this is the basic approach we are going to use to solve this problem. Now what basically we are doing over here is we are simply traversing steel right from the first character till the last character. Right. So I will simply write here simply what I am doing is I am going from the first character till the end character. Right. Sorry. N minus one character. And what I am doing is what I am doing is if the character present at yes of i let's suppose is equal equal to closing bracket what I am doing over here is what I am doing is I am simply decreeing my counter by one. Right. And what we did is if my s of i is equal equal to let's suppose opening bracket i'm simply increasing my counter by one and in between them what we're doing is at any point if my counter is not equals to zero i'm simply appending into my answer answer of plus equals to s of i right this is what i'm doing right if my counter is not equal to zero i'm simply putting it my answer and if it is equal to zero i'm simply ignoring it now the big question comes in promote why i wrote this at last but not why at start the reason behind this is for this one if you're initially standing at zero and my counter is zero right now we came across the opening bracket therefore you did one and if you check the condition is this if this is not equal to zero yes one is not equal to zero therefore you consider this bracket but if you consider this bracket there will be no any closing bracket for this one therefore it will not be a valid parenthesis that is the reason why i took this at last so that in between these two i can check if it is not equal to zero i can simply consider it into my answer right i hope so you understood this explanation now let's move on to the decode and check how we can write the code for this so let's check the code what we did is i simply declared the counter variable that is zero and i declared the string builder the reason why i declared the string builder we know that right because the strings in java are immutable and we cannot make changes in them so what I did is I simply start traversing the string right from the first character till the last character and whenever I come across the closing bracket I decrease my counter and if my counter is not equal to zero what I did is I simply put that character inside the answer variable right this is what the answer in which I will be storing the decomposed string and whenever I come across the opening parenthesis I will increase the counter and finally whatever the string builder is I will convert it into the string and then simply return it so this was the most easiest problem on the lead code right if you try to submit this this code will get accepted 100% now what will be the total time complexity for this the total time complexity for this is nothing but big of pn right because we are simply traversing the string right from the first till the last character so i hope so that you understood this problem really well just in case if you are new to our channel do subscribe to the channel for more such informative videos